So in the last class, uh, last class, okay, we saw what is called uh, a Gaussian noise, which we also refer to as AWGN. Okay, and we also saw how to filter this kind of noise, which comes under the under the you know image enhancement framework. And we saw that uh, you could use a simple spatial averaging filter, which would be local in nature. And then we also saw an extension of that, what is called a non-local means filter, which had this uh, has which had this nice capability that it could keep your edges reasonably intact, whereas a local averaging filter will tend to smooth uh, edges, whereas an NLM, right, a norm, NLM has this has this very strong feature that it can actually you know keep your edges intact. And then uh, along with that, right, we also saw uh, saw what is called what is called a bilateral filter, right? A bilateral filter is again something right that uh, that actually employs that uh, that kind of not only looks at looks at the you know looks at the neighborhood information in terms of spatial locations, but it also looks at intensity differences, and therefore also has the capability to keep edges intact. Now moving on, okay, we will look at what is called impulse noise. And uh, some people even refer to it, refer to it as impulsive noise. And impulse noise, okay, something that occurs in, uh, like uh, like Olseri said, occurs in in uh, uh, what are called digital links, ADC errors. Right? This could be due to ADC errors, faulty uh, displays, and so on. Faulty displays and so on. Uh, okay, now, now uh, a property, right? A kind of, uh, you know, a feature that sets it apart from AWGN and all is that, you no, know, the, the impulse noise is, uh, is the impulse noise, right? Affects, okay, does not affect affect all the pixels. Does not affect all the pixels in the sense that some of the pixels could be simply noise free. They're not even affected by it. Does not affect all the pixels. Does not affect all the pixels. But the ones that it affects. But the ones that it affects, okay, they tend to be very noisy. They tend to be very noisy. They tend to be very noisy and uh, tend to be very noisy. And the corrupted intensity and the corrupted intensity has no relation whatsoever, has no relation with the underlying, with the, has no relation with the signal strength at that location, has no relation, has no relation to the original intensity at, the, at that location, to the original intensity at that location, at that location. Okay. Uh, one example, for example, when we when we talk about you know a digital link, right? You can think about the MSB, the the most significant bit, you not know, changing from zero to one or from one to zero, for example, during a transmission error. Okay, when you talk about a faulty kind of a display, it could simply mean that you have a dead pixel in in a display. Okay, which which means that it always outputs a zero, irrespective of the signal strength. Or you could have a saturated pixel, which seems to be always on, right? You know, irrespective of the you know in, of the of the incoming intensity. A dead pixel or a saturated pixel does not kind of necessarily mean that the intensity there is zero. For example, if it is dead or it's too, if it is saturated, it will also be some value in between because of the influence of the neighboring intensities. Okay, but then the general idea is that in impulse noise, only some pixels get affected. Not all of them are affected, but the ones that are affected turn out to be very noisy. Okay, and uh, the intensity levels could in fact range from anywhere. I mean, typically, right, and in a general sort of a scenario, the intensity intensity could range could the intensity can range from any can range anywhere from 0 to 0 to 255 right any level between 0 and uh, 255 now there is a special case called the salt pepper noise okay where the intensity there where for example salt would correspond to a high intensity of 255 a pepper noise would uh, would mean an intensity of zero level okay those are kind of special those are extreme cases but otherwise, impulse noise in general does not have to limit itself to 0 or 255. It can take anywhere between 0 and 255. Uh, but uh, the point is, it is going to be completely independent of the signal strength. And uh, and uh, no, and uh, it, does, it is not true that it will affect all the pixels. Okay, So, so some of the pixels could still say, stay noise-free. Of course, it would be hard to know which ones are affected by impulse noise and which ones are not. Okay, There are, of course, algorithms that try to figure that out. But anyway, right, that is kind of beyond the scope scope of this of this course 
Now let us first understand, right? I mean, how do I even generate an inverse noise, right? AWG and we all know how to generate. Okay. Now it is not very clear as to how does one generate impulse noise because once you can, once you know how to generate impulse noise, then you can look at what kind of filters I and mean, how well do they work on these kind of images and so on. So, so let us first look at what is called random impulse noise generator. Impulse noise generator. Okay. Now I'm going to I'm going to write down. Okay, this is simply a model. Okay, this is simply a model for actually generating you know impulse noise. You can have other models also, but this is a standard model. Now what this says is that the impulse, uh, the impulse uh, affected image. Let's call this I subscript I. Let's just call the spatial location as some h comma k is equal to I of h comma k. That means the original intensity itself. Okay, so this is the impulse impulse affected image impulse affected image at location okay image intensity at location okay let's say image intensity at location h comma k okay well h comma k may sound a little strange to you okay for using it for an image location but that is okay i h comma k is really the right original intensity the original image intensity at original image intensity at location h comma k at location h comma k and uh, so this is equal to i h comma k when x is less than l i'll tell you what x n l are <coughs> if not that means if x is greater than or equal to l then the value that you assign at pixel location h k in the impulse affected image is i min plus y into i max minus i min okay provided x is greater than or equal to l okay now l itself is the number where l is the number between 0 and 1 okay so this l right that you have here is simply a number between 0 and 1 and l decides l in fact decides the fraction of pixels that are affected by decides the fraction of pixels, fraction of pixels affected by impulse noise, pixels affected by impulse noise, by impulse noise. So for example, if L is high, if L is high, okay, uh, that is say, say around 0.9, okay, suppose we, suppose we set L to a high value, okay then 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 uh, then it would mean that uh, it would mean that most pixels are are noise free because most pixels are are most pixels are noise free why okay this is because Okay, this is because X and L, right? This is because, because X and L are simply numbers. It is because X and L are simply random, uh, no, X and Y, not L. X and Y, X and Y are uniformly distributed, are random numbers that are uniformly distributed, uniformly distributed. distributed in the range 0 to 1 okay so so what this really means is that at every pixel location what you do is you draw a random number x right which is uniform in the interval 0 to 1 x gets a value if x if the number x is less than l now l is something that you would fix for this image let's say l equal to 0 0.9 in this case then what will happen is if x is a number which is which is uniform in the range 0 to 1 and when you draw a sample of x for some location h comma k and if x, is, x turns out to be less than L, okay, then in that case, you simply retain the, the right, original intensity value at that location, h comma k. If not, if x, let's say, turns out to be 0 0.91, then you go to the next thing, which will mean that the, the location at the, the, at the location h comma k, the, 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 right, the image intensity will be affected by impulse noise. And, uh, and then what will, what will happen at that location is that you'll get a new intensity. The old intensity gets replaced by this, by this new intensity, where IMAX and IMIN are, are something, right? that we need to specify. 
okay, what can be the maximum value of the impulse noise and I don't know what can be the minimum value of the impulse noise. So you can automatically see that setting a value, setting a higher value for L will mean that, will mean that the impulse noise is not going to be affecting all the pixels. In fact, it will have a sparse effect. On the other hand, if you, if, you if you choose, if you set your L low, then, then what you will be effectively doing is you will be actually, you will be actually int introducing dense impulse noise. Okay, into the image. So this L is some kind of a lever, right? It gives you a control over over how many, or what fraction of the pixels, right, can get affected by impulse noise. So it actually gives you that kind of a, a kind of a, a kind of a hold, right, over over impulse noise generation. Now I min and I max, right? Let's just write those down also. Now you can you can set any value for for uh, for right I you know for I min and I max depending upon what you know about the the noise okay for for that situation but typically okay now uh, uh, for salt pepper noise especially right if you have for salt pepper noise okay for salt pepper noise okay we set uh, I min is equal to zero and I max equal to equal to two fifty five. Okay, so that, uh, so that, right, what will happen is, so when you set it like that, so I min is equal to 0 and I max equal to 255, then what will happen is whenever, whenever, right, you, you come here and, uh, okay, now for, for, for salt pepper noise, I min is equal to this and Y can take only values 0 or 1, take only values 0 or 1. So, this is a special case. Okay, this is a special case, okay, which is the salt pepper noise, where y can take only only a binary value, okay, either zero or one, okay. So maybe right, we can say that it will take it with kind of equal probability. Okay, in which case, what will happen is, in which what will happen is, when let's say y is one and let's say x turns out to be x is still between zero and one, it can take any value uniformly between zero and one. So if you happen to be here and if and if some noisy pixel has to be introduced, then if y is 0, right, then what will happen is you will get i min. That means you will get actually, actually that intensity to be equal to 0, which would be a pepper noise. On the other hand, if y turned out to be 1, then what will happen is i min and minus i min will cancel off and you will get 255, which will be salt noise, right. So the salt pepper noise, is, so this model, right, that we have here also allows you to generate what is called salt pepper noise, okay. So, so this model, okay, also allows you to generate salt pepper noise, which will be a special case. Okay, and in this case, y of course, you know, takes up only value zero or one. Okay, uh, otherwise, otherwise, you know, depending upon what you know about the situation, you can set your i min, you can set your i max, and then your y will then be anything between zero and one, and x will also be right anything between zero and one. Now there are situations right where let's say where let's say you do not know right anything at all right about the about what the min and max intensities can be like. Okay, in the absence of any knowledge, okay. Uh, in the absence of, in the absence of, in the absence of uh, of any other knowledge of any any other knowledge of any knowledge of I min I max etc. Okay, in the absence of any knowledge, uh, okay, uh, no, a simple model, okay, a simple model would be this, would be, would be I I. Of h comma k is equal to i of h comma k again the same thing as we had earlier if x is less than l and uniform between 0 and 255 okay for x greater than or equal to l okay so so the absence of any and all the request the even normal model is this okay but then in case in case let's say right uh, you don't have any knowledge at all Okay, and uh, you just want to. Uh, okay, then in that case, you could use use a simple model like this. Now, this is as far as impulse noise generation is concerned. Now, we want to kind of say talk about how do you do filtering, right? The, the important thing is how do you how do you filter? 